said once again, and I will see you either the six or five. We did a Skype program uh, last and she's out at uh, Williamstown. Oh, nice. She has a wonderful exhibit at the Hancock Shaker Village. Her stuff looks three, like Vermeer. Two, she's Hi, my name is Jay Sugarman, and I want to welcome you to Museum Open House. This ongoing series features and highlights many of the outstanding museums and other cultural organizations. The main purpose of most programs is to inform viewers about current and upcoming exhibits, various programs, resources, and other opportunities that are available for the general public. Today we're fortunate to have as our guests Lisa Crossman and Adria Arch. Lisa serves as the curator at the Fitchburg Art Museum, and Adria is a Boston-based artist whose current exhibition entitled Reframing Eleanor is currently on display at the museum until November 10th. During the program, in addition to Adria informing us about her work, Lisa will be sharing the other outstanding exhibitions that are also available for the general public at the Worcester Art Museum. Let's start by meeting our guest and then finding out everything that's available at the museum right now. Welcome. So delighted you're both able to be here today. Thank you. It's a pleasure it, to be here. I had the great opportunity, as always, to uh, visit the museum and take in what you have now. And I think uh, this is the most uh, prolific time that I've been there with the quality of four plus shows. Adria's being one of them that we're going to hear much more about. So just from the top, have to tell viewers to make their way there this fall and early winter season to enjoy what's there. Thank you, Jay. Before we jump right to uh, Adria's work and hear some of the others, Lisa, just to set the context, mm -hmm. would you please share a little bit about the history and the mission of the museum? Great. Yeah, well, you have a, a view of the Fitchburg Art Museum now, so you can actually see the museum's connector gallery, which is the bridge to the, the new part of the museum, new as of the late 1980s, 1989. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you also have um, the older building there, which we're really going to focus on when we talk about Adria's exhibition today. So the museum um, was founded in um, the 1920s, um, and it was originally this a barn that was renovated mm. and converted into um, into the museum. Um, and uh, our founder is Eleanor Norcross. Um, and she is a very fascinating um, woman yeah. um, who was born in Fitchburg. Um, her father was a mayor in Fitchburg and um, a politician. Um, she was very sort of uh, close to her father. He was very supportive of her career. Um, and. Uh, she trained as a painter, um, and like many young women who wanted to train as a painter, um, she went off to Paris, was encouraged to go to Paris. Um, she trained with William Merritt Chase before then, mm -hmm. um, which, uh, you know, he's a very um, well-known educator. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, she spent time in Paris, she painted, she collected, but she would come back in, in summer in Fitchburg. Um, and, you know, she was born in the mid-19th century, passed away in, in the 1920s. Um, and she really, despite all of her travels and her interest in innovation, always sort of maintained a deep love of Fitchburg and wanted to give back. And so after she, well, before she passed away, she had made plans to leave money for the museum. Um, and her collection formed the basis of the original Fitchburg Art Museum's collection. And um, a couple of her friends took the money and matched it and um, hired a team of lady architects. They built the building. Um, so it has this like beautiful um, history of all of these women gathering together um, to build the Fitchburg Art Museum. And Eleanor yeah. is very beloved in Fitchburg and the museum continues to try to maintain a strong commitment to education um, and um, to Fitchburg, to our community. 
and we really try to use art to serve people in, in the best ways that we can, um, and also to support our contemporary artists who are based in New England. Um, and so I've begun a series of interventions in this pre-existing <laughs> mm. um, exhibition that former FAM curator Mary Tinty put together called Evoking Eleanor, um, which showcases um, Eleanor's paintings, um, but also um, parts of her collection, um, mostly decorative objects, um, and um, there are some furniture as well, some textiles that she collected. Um, and it's a really sort of beautiful overview of, of Eleanor as, as an artist and collector and benefactor of the museum. And the exhibition has been up for several years. Um, so just to sort of enliven the space and to sort of dig into Eleanor's history because yeah. she's such a fascinating woman, um, as, is, as is the building and, um, and the objects that she collected, I wanted to invite um, artists to, to respond um, to this pre-existing exhibition, which you see here. Um, so Adria <laughs> was the first artist who I thought of um, to intervene in the <coughs> space because Adria is, is a painter. Um, and she also was really starting to explore these hybrid paintings, mm. um, which I'm going to let her talk more about, but I thought that just the way that she, the sort of whimsical nature of them, um, the sort of experimental yeah. aspect of them, um, had some nice ties to sort of Fitchburg um, during Eleanor's era and maybe um, touched on some of Eleanor's adventurousness. Yeah, yeah, no, and as we'll hear from Adria right now, uh, just the thoughtfulness in paying homage, but also incorporating some elements that uh, Eleanor used in her own work in a whole different way uh, through our exhibition. Um, so yeah, would you share your initial thinking as we take a close-up yeah. here to get a little sense of what visitors can look forward to seeing? Yeah, well, so I was very honored to be asked by Lisa to do this, and it was something I'd not really done before, was to respond to a pre-existing collection, to have to know that my yeah. work would need to, to live, w you know, well with things that are already on the walls, and, you know, some things in gold frames, and, you know, it was, it was really like, oh, um, but, but a wonderful challenge. And so I made many trips to the museum and looked around and tried to sense what would be you know, what would I do? And I read a bit about Eleanor mm -hmm. and tried to understand her. And as I was working on these works, I began to really appreciate her in a way that I hadn't seen just the first thing, walking in and saying, oh, older paintings, hmm, you know. Uh, but she was, oh, well, first of all, she was a woman doing this work in a time when it was really, really, I mean, it was hard still for women artists to get acclaim, but even back then, way more. Yeah. And um, by the way, Lisa, uh, she, you, were, you might have um, wanted to mention too that she had gone to Mass College of Art yep, absolutely. Um, yep. to, to study how to teach drawing, which was, of course, something that all students had to take back in that time because industrial the Industrial Revolution required people to be able oh. to draw. Okay, you know, sure. So along with yeah, yeah. writing and spelling, you would also learn mm. how to draw. At any rate, I think that's a pretty um, interesting piece of that. But anyway, I looked at the work, and then I went back to the studio and um, thought about the textiles, and I thought about the decorative arts that she collected. And so it was really a fusion in my head of what I'd seen, plus my own sort of vocabulary of shapes. And um, this thing that I've been doing, which is called hybrid painting, it's really a cross between sculpture and painting. I myself mm. don't even really know mm. where one stops and the other starts, but they're painted on a lightweight plastic that I cut with scissors and an X-Acto blade um, because that's just the way I create my work. I create a big shape and then I add to it and it's kind of, it grows as I make it. I don't sketch it out first and have an exact idea. I never really know. Mm -hmm. um, and the, pa the uh, plastic is very flexible and can, every time I hang these pieces, they can look in different ways. So uh, I knew that there were a lot of variables. And so we made a couple of uh, times to meet Lisa and I with, you know, prototypes of things in the space mm -hmm. to see if it was all going to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The scale was right or the colors were right. And then I just kept working and kind of came up with what I came up with. Yeah, so, I mean, it's just so many facets of the artwork, sculpting, inventing, because when you mentioned yeah. prototypes, yeah. Um, <laughs> going after one iteration, maybe after yes. another, to see how it would adapt to the space and to Eleanor herself and her artwork. 
Right. That's fascinating. Yeah, and thank you. What, really, up for the challenge. Yeah, yeah. And so I was thinking about what women might have worn at that time. You know, I think of cut velvet and I could have net netting. And so I included those elements into the work. You know, of course, the colors that were in her paintings and some of the shapes. So, and there's a, an, an area that has uh, glitter on it. Just sort so of, if we look at this, yes. what would you highlight here, please? Uh, oh, well, I mean, just that... What's really fun for me is, you know, being in the space. You can't, you know, you really have to go there, you, you know, to, sure. to walk. And I really want people to touch these works and to move around them and to That's look through great. them. And to look at Eleanor's work through the holes, because you see a lot of holes in my work. Yeah. To pick them up, to look at, you know, the world through these holes, as if you're looking through our contemporary lens at another time. That's great. So it, I'm really responding to her work in that way. And, you know, another wonderful feature that, goes throughout the exhibition is some background music. Yes, yes. Can you share, as we listen to a little, sure. as we're talking, yeah. can you share the origin yeah. of that and how it fits in? Yeah, so um, I collaborated with a wonderful musician named um, Ken Field. He is based in Somerville and our Cambridge rather, and he's a wonderful saxophonist and he plays in many different bands. And he, has, um, he and I worked together to create a soundscape that might evoke or help you to sort of have a sense of what this, what this time, you know, a fusion of the time that she lived in with little clips of uh, um, grandfather clocks chiming mm, and mm. ticking and, and steps and some of the natural sounds that you might have heard, like birds singing or yep. streams running or a sewing machine. Right. Just, and then his more contemporary saxophone. So there are three separate channels, and so when you're in the space, you're going to hear almost in stereo yeah. this uh, revolution of sounds playing. It's and fantastic. I'm just hoping that it just adds another element that sets the tone for looking at the work. It does. I think um, it heightens your senses, I think, as you're making your way through. Yeah. Because um, you still have that and you appreciate it in the background, but it does something to the viewing process as well and interacting with your work. Yeah, yeah, maybe slows it really down. Really wonderful feature. Good. How Thank did you. that come about? How well, um, I uh, had been working with some sound a bit and dancers uh. in other installations that uh. I've done. But this time I thought, I don't want to just have it a one-off piece, which was what it was usually at the reception. I would have a musician working with the dancers. But I thought, um, it would be interesting to have this running throughout the life of the show. Yeah. And we all agreed, well, why not try it? So it was new for me. And I'm really happy with the way it came out. And mm -hmm. it's something I think I'm going to continue to do. Really like it. We can mention movement, and that's another thing that I found also yeah. a wonderful addition throughout are these different workshops or presentations mm -hmm. where dancers yes. are giving uh, exhibitions, conducting workshops right, right in, in the, the space. setting. That's yeah. right. We want, I think, museums and art in general to be more interactive yes. and to be more engaging. And um, I, you know, since I've, I've been using dancers uh, in several of these earlier iterations, uh, to almost complete the work in a way the body becomes another sculptural element. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, we were talking it'd be great to do something like that here in Fitchburg as well. So um, we worked with uh, Fitchburg State and some of their young dancers and also Monkey House, which yes. is um, a so dance that. company. Um, I think they're based in, is it Maine, in Maynard? Is she where, that's where they're, they're in based Greater in? Boston. Greater Boston, sure. yep. yeah. And, um, uh, Karen Krolek, the director, is a wonderful educator, mm -hmm. too, and so she was brought in to lead these workshops and to help just anybody uh, f find what it's like to move through space yeah. with my work and yes. with Eleanor's on the wall and kind of appreciate in a different way what art can make you think of and make you do. So um, that was really, really fun. No, it reminds me, you see more and more these days, uh, practices like yoga taking place in any <laughs> number of settings. Yeah. So definitely makes a lot of sense and a wonderful addition to museums yeah. to bring in movement right, as well. Right, exactly. And I think it makes a lot of sense for Adria's work in particular. I mean, I just loved how Adria was thinking about painting as as active, as the mm -hmm. experience of, of looking at it as active and engaging with it um, so that she really invites viewers at any time to, to sort of walk around the pieces. People can gently touch them. They can look through the holes. They can put their hands through the holes. <laughs> um, and I just loved what a playful invitation these pieces were. And mm. I think the sound element 
um, really fills the space as well and adds a, another dimension, as most you're saying. Most definitely, most definitely. And Thanks. the workshops were great. Yeah, and, and bringing really people fun. together and being able to talk about the history a bit. We invited Susan Navarre from the Fitchburg Historical Society mm. as well. So we all got to learn a little bit about Fitchburg's history, talk about Eleanor, talk about Adria's mm. work, and then just play in the space. And yeah. it was really exciting. Yeah. All places, museums in the category need more play, so fabulous yes. that you brought it into yeah. this. What's been some of the reaction and feedback you've heard or gotten from visitors? Uh, I've, I've just had a couple conversations with some of the docents who've mm. seen me on oh, weekends that. coming in and they come up to me and it's so gratifying to hear how some of their school groups or some of their uh, other you know visitor groups have just responded or smiled or you know playfully or you know sort of taken aback and um, just really enjoyed it. That makes me feel really good. I'm glad to hear that. And Lisa, you probably hear more than I do. I don't know. I hear a lot of those comments yeah. from the docents as well. I mean, I they have a chance to be there with our school groups more than I do. Mm. Um, but I think that um, people have really been enjoying these pieces a lot. And on the days that we've been there with the workshops and on this past Sunday in particular, um, people seem to be having a lot of fun with these pieces. And just to be excited to sort of re- <laughs> re-examine the exhibition because it's it's been up for a while and it's a beautiful show and I think everyone wants it to stay for, for longer, <laughs> um, but it's just an opportunity to sort of like look at everything with fresh eyes, I yeah, think. Exactly. And, um, yeah, no, I think it also, at least for me, brought my attention much more to Eleanor yeah, as well. Exactly. So the combination of enjoying your work and then appreciating her and especially her commitment to the community really struck me in right. learning more about her through your exhibition. And this actually is this image here where it's a picture of um, her uh, collections through the whole of mine. Um, so she had these collections of decorative decorative arts and she yeah. would go and buy pieces that were slightly chipped yep. and because she could afford them she said it doesn't matter yeah, they're still beautiful point. pieces yeah, yeah. and you know I can afford these and the people of Fitchburg need to it's important for everybody to learn about the world and and this beauty that that she yeah. sensed so there are fragments in my work where I take textile mm. pieces like these and yes. brocades and embroideries and 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 velvet and put them on my work so like this one really shows off how I'm looking at you know the the painting on the pottery and yeah it's gonna gonna get off it's like wonderful it's wonderful yeah well thank you so much oh, and welcome. definitely encourage yeah. people to make their way yeah. uh, before uh, November 10th Go to enjoy yes. that <laughs> and pay attention to your upcoming work yeah, as well thank you. You may I add a couple please of do extra notes please do so Karen Krolak I believe is coming back to the museum on November 3rd on Sunday to do a little bit of musing with some of her dancers. So they mm. will be oh, nice. around the museum ah. in, in Adria's space, I think, for a, a little while, between <laughs> one and four. And then um, I also wanted to mention again that this is Adria's show is the first in a series. So stay tuned because <laughs> we'll have two more contemporary artists each consecutive fall. Wonderful. Um, and the next one, Mara Superior, is going to respond specifically to uh, Eleanor's uh, ceramic collections. Um, she's very interested in porcelain in particular, so mm. we'll see what she does. And then um, I'm hoping maybe the third one will look a little bit more at Elme Manning and how the, the architects who um, renovated the building, because mm. it was oh. unique to have oh, nice. female architectural firms right. at that time too in the 20s. So wonderful. Stay tuned. Oh, yeah, yeah, lots to come. <laughs> You know, as we move on, Lisa, as I mentioned in the introduction, there's several other outstanding exhibitions. Would you start by giving us an overview of the first one we see here, D Daniela Rivera? Sure. Um, so this is a, a view of, of one gallery, one piece in this gallery, Tilted Heritage. Um, all, and there are two other um, galleries where her work is installed as well. So it's really kind of three separate projects, I would say, um, mm. bodies of work that come together. And I think it's a nice opportunity to sort of see um, Daniela Rivera's work um, in a broader context to see sort of the interconnecting pieces of her practice. Um, she's a Chilean-born artist. Um, she's a professor at Wellesley. She actually just won the Rappaport Prize um, and will be giving a talk um, tomorrow night. Um, and the Cordoba. at the de Cordoba yeah. mm -hmm. and so it's very exciting um, and her work responds to art historical narratives um, national narratives personal narratives and so there's a lot of there are a lot of layers um, to her pieces 
Um, this particular one was um, actually created in um, 2015, but it's been reinstalled in our gallery and I think looks really nice yeah. in there. And she did a new copper point wall drawing around it. Um, so copper point using kind of like a, a copper point kind of wool for mm -hmm. a lot of it. Um, but it's a labor intensive drawing that kind of reveals the wall itself, but also really plays with sort of illusion and representation. So you can see sort of where the, the shadows start and end become yeah. a little blurred mm -hmm. in the back. Um, and it's a it's a play of perspective in a lot of ways. And I could go on and on about yeah, this piece. Yeah, there's um, so I'm much, but we, won't we have a lot of time. this captivating yeah, um, exhibit. Yeah, so this is, these are all new paintings. They are three um, large scale paintings. So they're all, the back one is 12 by 20 feet and the other are 12 feet tall by 30 feet. So they're quite large. Um, and it's all connected to work that she did in Chuki Kamada, which is an open pit copper mine in the north of Chile. Um, so she went there um, and did research. There actually was a piece that she did at the MFA Boston, mm. which responded um, to Chuki Kamada as well. But here um, she's uh, sort of pulling from these a series of interviews she yeah, did. That's so um, rich. So she did these interviews where she actually filmed um, the hands of um, former miners as they were talking and sort of telling stories about their memories of, of Chuki Kamada because um, due to environmental conditions, people have since had to move away to a nearby town. So it's actually a mother and son, Hilda and Pablo, in the galleries who she interviewed and their hands, um, you can't see it here, but in another part of the gallery, you can see uh, photographs of their hands engraved with parts of their interviews. Yeah. And here, um, these hands and torsos are kind of a, a, a combination of the two of them. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see sort of the, the very sort of realistic representation of the hands coming out of this minimalist background. And it's disorienting to stand in the center of the gallery, I think, because of the scale. No, and it's wonderful you have the accompanying feature of uh, the transcript yes. of the interview. And just another quick thing that's so endearing to the Fitchburg Museum are different sort of learning stations, yes. opportunities to interact with the various uh, exhibits, if not the exhibit itself, like Adria's. Yes, yeah, so a you fabulous can feature. Learn of about the, museum. the process, of the, um, you can learn about some of the background. Um, and just to sure. tie in her last piece that yeah. we're going to quickly share. I also will say just with the paintings that um, those really connect concretely to labor and yes. um, to workers and miners and I think that labor and its history in Fitchburg is also pretty significant and there are some mm. high ends of sort of Chuki Kamada in Fitchburg's history that I really thought a lot about. In this space, the connector that we see here is unique in that <laughs> It bridges the old building with the new building, and it is also an extremely strange space. <laughs> um, and Daniela, in her her play with um, issues of representation and perspective, and drawing and painting against architecture, fell in love with this space, yeah. um, which used to have gray carpet, not white mm. carpet. Um, so she has created a drawing in this space. So you can see that with the copper point on the wall, she's emphasized um, the angle of the, of the windows. Mm -hmm. so you have this effect of one point perspective that's enhanced in the gallery, but also it's an invitation for people to participate in the drawing. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we vacuum the carpet every so often <laughs> um, to keep some of, you know, the loose whatever off of it. But it's really about people being able to, um, to walk on it for their marks um, to change the carpet over time. So nice. we'll and see what we, happens. It's definitely so much to see and enjoy of her work. Just a quick word first sure. of David Katz, which deserves a lot more, but yes. a brief mention, please. Um, so David Katz is a Rhode Island-based um, artist. He works um, a lot with on-fired clay, um, as well as um, with ceramics, fired clay. Um, so you can see here, uh, this main view is of a site-specific installation that he did for the Fitchburg Art Museum. Um, and it's with on-fired clay, and yeah. it's all reflecting on the vessel as a cross-cultural, centuries-old form mm. that is very familiar um, and is both um, ceremonial at times and functional and, um, you know, basic and utilitarian and more elaborate and ornate at other times. And he's reflecting on all of these different um, 
ways that the vessel has been made um, and has looked a lot at how specific cultures ranging from Peru to China have created specific vessels. Um, and he, he joins them together and is trying to think about some of the connecting points um, with vessels. And I think these really beautiful pieces. Another nice connection to Daniela with the use of the hands. Mm. The use of the hand and labor mm. and his, um, his installation on the site specific one changes over time too, right? So, you know, there was the whole drying and cracking of it in yeah, the beginning, yeah. which has slowed down. Yeah. Um, and it's, I think, pretty stable now. But it's- To see different handprints yeah. on the work right. And it's well. it ties to the earth yeah. and it plays with scale. Yeah, and, yeah. That's really, really And final one we want to sure. have a quick word about, sure. please. Um, so this is an exhibition of the work by two Boston-based um, photographers, David Hilliard and Sage Sawyer. Um, each of these photographers has photographed um, a parent um, for a while. So this is David Hilliard's father, Ray, and David has photographed his father since the 90s. Mm. Um, intermittently, um, not as a really focused series, but as he's photographing other subjects and has really thought a lot about his relationship with his father and masculinity, mm. class, you know, how complex his father is mm. as someone who he talks about who both reads Playboy and Throw, you know? <laughs> so, and it's really about the process of aging as well and how um, he's looked a lot at how his relationship with his father has changed over time. And Sage Sawyer, we can see a piece from her series Witness to Beauty um, which was really um, created in the 2000s, um, although she, there's one sh image in the show from 19, in the 1990s as well. Mm -hmm. um, but Sage's mother, you can kind of see Sage in the background there with the camera, um, but her mother um, in the foreground is a former fashion model. And mm -hmm. so Sage was really interested in, again, sort of thinking about her relationship with her mom, ideas that we construct about beauty, um, and so Sage and her sister show up in another in a number of pictures. Um, her sister Elaine, um, quite frequently as well. And you get to sort of see her mother's personality come through. Like she's a very mm -hmm. sort of powerful, dynamic <laughs> woman. Um, but it also Great allows us to think about you know again aging and familial relationships and um, how we expect women to be in front in front of a camera. Mm. Um, so I think together. Even though these two did these separate series, it sort of brings out um, certain aspects of their work that you might not really think about, like class, and it sort of sharpens um, gender and mm -hmm. different issues around intimacy. Um, and David and Sage um, are giving a talk tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Um, at the Fitchburg Art Museum, which should be really, really great. And I'll say David and Daniela are giving a talk on November 10th. Nice, so. nice. And these last three exhibitions are here for an extended time yep. into early into next year. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Yep. So plenty of time There's to time. enjoy them as well. There's time. Wonderful. Um, well, unfortunately, we've come to the end of today's program. We could ask so much more about what's there now, what's upcoming. Encourage people to definitely make their way to enjoy your work, Adria, before November, November 10th. 10th. <laughs> right. And to follow you online yep. and yep. your other explorations. You. And same with the Fitchburg Art Museum. So thanks again and looking forward to going back soon. Thanks, Thank Jane. you. Thank you. I want to also want to thank those of you watching for joining us and hope you'll be able to tune in next time. <laughs>